say. say. We have forgotten how to say I don't know. When was the last time you said I don't know? Say. So the word I want to talk about is information. And I think it's such a central, crucial concept to understand the age we're living in, both the good and the bad about it. In a way, you might say it's a concept that has been overused and for so long we talk about information age, information technology, information revolution. It has been with us, this word, in our daily lives for a very long time and it feels like we take it for granted. We do not really put that much thought into what exactly it means or it has come to mean throughout the years. When we look at the etymology of the word, information, of course, goes all the way back to Old French and to Latin, informationem, to, it could mean to teach, to educate, um, to instruct even, but it also could mean to form, to shape, so you could translate it as to give the mind a form, to shape the mind, and I like that definition of the term. But if I may take you back a little bit in time to late 1990s and early 2000s, there was a time you will remember when there was so much optimism in the world. Back then, you might even say the biggest optimists were tech optimists. They had so much trust in digital technologies. There was this expectation that thanks to the spread of te digital technologies, the whole world was going to become one big global village. Nationalism was going to disappear. Religious fundamentalism was going to disappear. Democracy, pluralistic liberal democracy was going to to spread everywhere thanks to the spread of information. So the idea back then, and many people wrote about this both in media and in academia as well, that if you could give the citizens of the world more information, if they became informed citizenry, then they would always make the right choices. Now fast forward from the optimism of late 1990s and early 2000s, we have almost swung to another extreme and we have entered today the age of pessimism, the age of anxiety, of anger, fear, frustration, angst. It's almost like an existential angst. And I think this is the right moment for us to take another look at what information means and where we, we have gone wrong, you know. Um, and what we failed to grasp at the time. I make a distinction between information, knowledge and wisdom. I think they're completely different things. And we're living in an age in which we have way too much information, but less knowledge and even less wisdom. And we have to change this ratio. The truth is, we cannot process this much information. Our minds, our brains do not work in that way. What's happening right now is that every day we check our social media feed and there's so much happening in the world and we maybe just scroll it up and down, spending no more than five seconds for every piece of information and then we move on to the next subject and then the next subject. And in the long run, this creates fatigue. It creates numbness. We are not really processing the information that we are seeing. It's just a world of speed, you know, constant rush. I think knowledge is very different than information in the sense that knowledge cannot be rushed. For knowledge, you need books. You need you need to slow down, basically, you know. You need longer pieces of journalism, investigative journalism or in-depth analysis. But primarily, essentially, it requires an inner garden. And then eventually, I think our aim should be wisdom. For wisdom to happen, we need to bring the mind and the heart together. Wisdom requires empathy, emotional intelligence, the ability to put yourself in the shoes of another person. So I think our aim should be to decrease the amount of information that we deal with every day because it's not really making an impact and to increase the amount of knowledge that we are um, receiving and ultimately aiming for uh, wisdom. There's also one more thing I want to talk about. I think too much information might become an obstacle in front of proper knowledge because it gives us the illusion that we know the subject but in fact, we know so little. 
You know, you can ask me, let's say anything, everything. If I don't know the answer, I will just Google it. And in the next five minutes, I, I will be able to say a few words about that subject, giving me the impression that I know something about the subject. But in fact, I know nothing about the subject. So what's happening right now is we have forgotten how to say, I don't know. When was the last time you said, I don't know? You know, we do sometimes say, I don't know to children. If they ask us very complex questions, then we say, oh, I don't know, you know. But among, between adults, we really rarely ever say, I don't know. Because we're surrounded with so much information, let alone misinformation or disinformation, it gives us the impression that we know a little bit about every single subject. So I think it's very important to remember the humility of being able to say, I don't know. And for that, we need to focus on knowledge. There is um, there's an interesting theory that was developed by the French mathematician René Thom, in which he described information as a semantic chameleon, in the sense that information is not actually not static. It does change depending on the environment. It does take on different shapes and colors. And you need to approach it with also doubt, you know. I think doubt is very, very healthy. Um, Information without doubt is a dogma, and dogmas can be really, really dangerous. But ultimately, what I'm trying to say is, in an age in which we have an abundance of information, why don't we try to change this ratio, focus on knowledge, focus on wisdom, and please remember to say, I don't know. I think that will be a healthier approach. Say, say.